A few weeks ago, I was on LinkedIn, doom scrolling. Like you do. I don't hate my job exactly, but it is neither exciting nor engaging. And after getting laid off three times in two years, I try to make as many connections as possible. Anyway, I came across a conversation between a woman and an executive at Crunchyroll. She mentioned how she'd like to watch anime, but she had no idea where to start. She was a huge Lord of the Rings fan, so she was hoping for something fantastical. He recommended One Piece. Rage filled me. You're gonna recommend an anime with over a thousand episodes as someone's first anime? They said Lord of the Rings, not Wheel of Time or Malazan Book of the Fallen. I immediately jumped in and told her to watch Ferian instead, or head on over to High Dive and watch Farming Life in Another World. I don't understand how people who not only work in the anime industry, but run entire teams of people are unable to recommend anime. Especially when this person tells you what their favorite series is. And so I decided to do this video. Welcome once again to Musings by Danan. If you're new here, my name is Danan. I'm currently reading over 600 manga and light novels, and my two favorite genres are fantasy and romance. So on this channel, we talk a lot about both of those genres, but we tend to look more into story structure and tropes rather than how cool the fight scenes are or how great the animation or artwork is. Which brings me to the subject of today's video, what anime should you watch if you're new to anime? Before we get started, I'd like to quickly ask you to like and subscribe. It really does help the channel and it's free. With that out of the way, let's get into the video. I'm going to make two assumptions. First of all, that you have never watched anime before outside of a couple of clips on YouTube or maybe a Ghibli film, and that you don't know about modern Japanese culture. Jokes are only funny if you understand the reference, so I won't recommend anime that rely on your understanding of Japan. Now, some content creators have a go-to anime that they just blanket recommend to everyone, but I don't agree with that. I'd rather give you a custom recommendation, but since we're not having a conversation, I'll just have to make recommendations based on your favorite genres. Speaking of genres, there's one more thing I want to discuss before we get started. Manga in Japan, and to a certain extent other media, is divided into four main categories. Shonen, Shoujo, Seinen, and Josei. These categories are split up based on target demographics. Shonen manga, and the anime based on those manga, are targeted towards boys aged 12 to 20, and shoujo manga are targeted towards girls in the same age range. Think of these like YA novels. Nothing wrong with loving young adult literature, but if it's not for you, then you should stay away from these anime. Shonen and shoujo series tend to rely on tropes, simple plots, and easy to understand characters. Jose are series targeted towards women in their 20s and 30s, just like Sinan targets men in the same age range. These stories have more subtle storytelling, grounded in realistic characters, and tend to be more adult in nature. Not all of them are R-rated, but some are very much so. So if you think of anime as nothing but cartoons targeted towards teenagers, that's because a lot of them are, but not all of them. With that explanation out of the way, let's get started. That's right, we're starting out with the dark stuff. Gritty crime dramas like True Detective, Justified, or even shows from the other side of the coin like Dexter or Ozark are top tier television. So people who are fans of these types of shows don't want something light and fluffy. Fans of these shows don't enjoy horror because monsters are unrealistic. They want their shows dark, gritty, and brutal. Recommended anime? Monster. This masterpiece is written by one of the greatest mangaka alive, Naoki Urasawa. This 74 episode anime, based on a manga that has sold more than 20 million copies, is considered one of the greatest anime to ever air. The show centers around two characters, the gifted brain surgeon, Dr. Kenzo Tenma, and the boy, Johann Liebert. One night, Johan and his twin sister Anna are brought to the hospital, a gunshot wound to the boy's head, 
their parents found already dead by the time paramedics arrived. Tenma is asked to leave the boy mid-surgery to save the mayor of Dusseldorf, but he refuses. He chooses to save the boy. Of course, this causes some political backlash, and the hospital director and various other doctors try to oppose Tenma's rise in standing. But then, mysteriously, all of the bureaucrats and executives who are opposed to Tenma wind up murdered. Tenma is questioned, but the police have no proof. Years later, Tenma discovers that it was Johan who was behind the murders. And he is a complete monster. A monster that Tenma saved and then unleashed upon the world like a plague. But can a doctor take a life? Oh, by the way, everything I've mentioned so far is covered in the first few episodes. The twists and turns as you navigate this series are legendary, and you won't be disappointed. Let's say you were in love with Game of Thrones. And I mean, who wasn't? Until the series got past the books, of course. Or maybe you grew up on Conan. Well, I've got two for you. The first is an anime that is currently airing and helped spawn an entire genre. Moshoko Tensei is the story of a man who was bullied to the point of never wanting to come out of his room again, getting hit by a truck, and finding himself reincarnated as a baby. Mind you, he is not a good person. He is a pervert who thinks of women as objects. After all, for the past 20 years, the only interaction he's had with women has been video game avatars and pornography. But now he's forced to actually talk to people and come to the realization that life is hard. It takes a lot of work, but hard work is sometimes its own reward. I know a lot of people hate this series, and I understand where they're coming from. But in order to have a redemption story, the main character needs to start out as a piece of garbage. The other fantasy I'd like to recommend is the original Berserk. Do not watch anything else. If you're wanting to find the rest of the story, go read the manga. Stay away from the sequels, they are painful to watch. Guts is a young mercenary who winds up a member of Griffith's mercenary company, the Band of the Falcon. While a member, he rises through the ranks and eventually becomes Griffith's right-hand man. That journey is brutal and blood-soaked. Yes, I know that Guts is using a ridiculously long sword that weighs several hundred pounds and would be impossible for a real human to swing around. This is where that trope comes from. Now, let's say you like your fantasy a little lighter. Lord of the Rings, Merlin, or Gallivant. Good guys win, bad guys lose, and everyone lives happily ever after. This is my favorite genre, and the one I've read the most of in both Western literature and Eastern. Good thing I've got three fantasy anime for you. The first one is one that's currently airing, Firion. Firion follows the adventures of our titular hero, the elven mage who helped defeat the demon lord. Fifty years afterwards, she is unchanged, but the two humans she adventured with have aged significantly. Even the dwarf in their party became an old man. Finally, the hero Himmel dies and is buried with full honors. Therian is full of regret, realizing she wasted all that time when she could have gotten to know him better. And now she is retracing the journey she took all those years ago with the young apprentices of her former party members. The anime is a slow burn, with a focus on world building. You've got entire episodes where the most exciting thing that happens is the discovery of flowers, which should please all those Tolkien fans. Another series that fans of Tolkien would enjoy is Farming Life in Another World. Our main character dies and gets reincarnated and just wants to have a peaceful farming life. But the god who does the reincarnation makes him just a bit too strong. But rather than conquering the world or defeating armies, our main character just wants to live a peaceful life. He winds up as the chief of a village filled with Naga, dragons, vampires, wolves, elves, and a whole bunch of other fantasy creatures. But all of them come together for good food, good wine, song, and dance, proving that Tolkien was right. It is far better to enjoy good food and good company than gold. The last fantasy I want to recommend will appeal to women. This is a Jose fantasy. The saint's magic power is omnipotent tells the story of Sei Takanashi, an overworked office worker in her mid-twenties who gets summoned to another world. She looks over and sees another girl, but much younger. 
Well, of course the prince would assume that the younger, prettier girl is the saint that was summoned to save the world from the encroaching darkness. There's no way it could be that old woman. Say, of course, is pissed, but after a bit finds herself working at the royal apothecary. She always loved herbs and has fond childhood memories of working with herbs to make soaps and lotions with her mother. And now she's surrounded by hot guys who treat her with respect. And she's not working 14 hour days so she's getting enough rest. In fact, she starts to look younger and more beautiful. Not because of magic, but because she's finally getting enough sleep. And just as she starts to settle into her new life and her new role as a potion maker, everyone starts to realize that she may be the saint after all. Which sucks because she loves her new job and her new co-workers. And now she has to go off and save the world instead of spending time with the handsome captain of the guard. Let's say you love Dresden Files, Wednesday, or Supernatural. You like your fantasy taking place in the real world. Werewolves, vampires, wizards, or perhaps things from beyond our realm slipping through the cracks in reality, like in Stranger Things. Well, do I have a series for you. Blood Blockade Battlefront is an anime series about a boy who heads to the city of dreams, Hell Salem's Lot, formerly known as New York City. A portal to the beyond opened up one day, and what was once New York is now a paranormal melting pot of monsters, magic, and the mundane. He joins a special crime fighting group of superhumans, most of whom use blood magic to fight against vampires. But vampires aren't the only monsters who prey on the innocent. This series perfectly balances between dark fantasy and light humor. Fantastic characters, great comedy, top tier animation, and an opening song that will leave you filled with ennui. Now, while Blood Blockade Battlefront has a lot of funny moments, I wouldn't consider it a comedy. If you want a supernatural comedy, something along the lines of What We Do in the Shadows or The Umbrella Academy, you should check out The Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya. Haruhi is God, and a high school student. I'll just let that sink in for a minute. Yes, it is that scary. The thing is, she doesn't know she's God. Three years ago, Haruhi realized how boring the world was and decided it would be more exciting if time travelers, aliens, and people with psychic powers exist. All of a sudden, they sprang into existence. The universe was warped by the desires of a teenage girl. And now, in high school, Haruhi wants to put together a club to investigate strange occurrences. Four people join her club. A time traveler, an alien, a person with psychic powers, and a regular boy who is caught up in the middle of everything. Still obsessed with the strange and unusual, Haruhi wants to investigate the paranormal. The Esper, Alien, and Time Traveler are all just trying to ensure Haruhi doesn't get bored again. Season 1 is a great series. Season 2 is a bit long, but you unlock a special achievement if you get through it. Are you a brown coat who is still upset about how Fox handled Firefly? Do you still find yourself rewatching Babylon 5 or Farscape? If Star Trek is too neat and tidy for you and you want your spacefaring science fiction to be a bit more down to earth, you should check out Cowboy Bebop. Considered one of the greatest anime of all time, Cowboy Bebop is a neo-noir space western anime that tells the story of a crew of misfits just trying to earn enough money to keep flying and put food on the table. You've got the jaded former cop, Chet Black, the femme fatale, Faye Valentine, the oddball child genius, Edward, and the mysterious main character, Spike Spiegel, a man traumatized by his past. Of course, all of the characters are dealing with past trauma in one way or another. All four of our ensemble struggle with loneliness, but eventually they start to value each other and begin to gel. Instead of a jam session, they coalesce into a band and play together. Almost. Or maybe you prefer space shows a little bit more grand. Maybe you want to see a galaxy-spanning war, with hundreds of thousands of ships firing their glittering lasers across the empty expanse. Politics, war, and money make up the foundation for the Legend of the Galactic Heroes. There are two versions of this anime. The original is over a hundred episodes, but is very faithful to the books. All ten of them. The new one, Desnuthen, 
trims a lot of the fat and focuses on the two main characters. On one side, you have a fascist empire, and the main character of that side has risen through the ranks of the nobility to become the admiral of the fleet. The man who opposes him is a student of history, and only joined the military so he could have access to the libraries. His side represents a federation of democracy. Normally, democracy is celebrated as the freedom-loving good guys, but in this case, it's honest about how corrupt their government is. And the fascist side isn't as ruthless as when the empire was first founded. So both sides have good points and bad points, which is what makes this series interesting. Maybe you prefer more down-to-earth science fiction. Rather than spaceships, you prefer cybernetics and hacking. Maybe you're a fan of Altered Carbon, Almost Human, or Mr. Robot. If Cyberpunk 2077 is one of your favorite games, I have the perfect anime for you. Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex is a series with two seasons, each of which has 12 episodes. It follows a team of police who handle cybercrimes. Sounds boring, I know. But when cybercrimes include brain hacking so that no one can remember your face, or causing construction equipment to go haywire, things can get interesting. Major Motoko Kusanagi is considered one of the best female leads in all of anime. The action is top-notch, lots of mysteries to solve, and a great story. Maybe you enjoy comedies. Friends, Seinfeld, Always Sunny in Philadelphia, or The Office. I've got two for you, but one of them is one I'd wait on a bit. You don't want this to be your first anime, but you will eventually want to watch Konosuba, God's Blessing on this Wonderful World. Our main character, Kazuma, dies and gets the chance to reincarnate. The gracious goddess allows him to pick an item that he can take with him on his new adventure. Eventually, Kazuma picks the goddess, Aqua. They form a party with a mage who only knows one spell, and a crusader who likes getting hit a little bit too much. Think of this show as a fantasy version of Seinfeld or Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Everyone is a jerk, no one ever learns from their mistakes, but somehow, things just work out. This show is hilarious, even for non-anime fans, but is even funnier after you've watched a few anime and gotten a feel for things. But sometimes, you just need a soft office romance. A story about a new girl at the office and her seen her who she finds both interesting and frustrating. About the pretty secretary who's always getting hit on by sales guys, except for the one who saves her. The anime is called My Senpai is Annoying, and if you like office sitcoms, you'll enjoy this one. The one thing I want to explain is the Japanese word senpai, as well as the counterpart kohai. This is one piece of linguistics that will help you as you begin your journey into anime. A senpai is someone who has been in your position longer than you. They're not your boss or your manager or whatever. They're a coworker or fellow student who is older. A senior in high school compared to a freshman, for example. Kohai is the opposite of senpai. They are the younger or newer person in the relationship. Well, that should be enough to get you started. If you didn't find anything on the list that appealed to you, I'm sure we can find you something. Leave a comment below with a few of your favorite things to watch, and I'm sure I can find something for you. Thanks for tuning in. Once again, a huge shout out to my editor Cute Stuff. I couldn't make these videos without her. If you'd like to hire her to edit your own videos, she can be reached at cutestuff.edits at gmail.com. Link is down below. If you're looking for ways to support the channel directly, you can head on over to patreon.com slash Damon. There are several tiers to choose from. You can pick an anime or manga for me to do a video about, or you can join our monthly manga club. I also wanted to give a quick shout out to all of my patrons. Waffles, Jariah, Danny, Muffins, Marcus, Squishy, Brat, Roxy, Sean, Pob, Zombie, Mark, Borgi, Nazwin, Pedro, Tom, Cole, Midge, Detroff, Rally, Frank, Alex, Jenny, Alex, Julio, Michael, Valeri, Kalu, Apricot, and Slowpoke. You guys are awesome. I post new anime or manga videos often, or you can click here to watch additional videos. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all again next time on Musings by Danan.